Hey everybody, it's Ben Gothard here and today we're doing another Project Egg interview. Today we are talking to Megan Swanson from Omaha, Nebraska. How are you doing today, Megan? Great, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. So let's jump right in. My first question for you, Megan, is what is your story? Oh gosh, how much time do you have? Um, <laughs> Well, uh, my story of how I came about being an entrepreneur is probably a little bit different than most people's. Um, I knew I wanted to work in music and specifically the Christian music industry since I was two years old. Um, the first time I was in front of a stage of a few thousand people was when I was four. And um, my parents are Christian worship leaders and um, songwriters, and we've traveled all around since I was little. And so I knew I wanted to always kind of be artistic and in a creative field, but I didn't necessarily know that that was considered an entrepreneur. I don't think I even really heard that word until I was probably 19, maybe. And so um, I packed up my things when I was 18 and moved to Nashville, Tennessee to pursue music and graduated from Belmont University just last year. Um, but the way that that kind of all happened was not just your normal bam, 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 four years experience. Um, about five years ago now, um, I, I was coming back from my freshman year of college. I'll never forget the day that my mom told me to look my, myself in the eyes and tell myself that I was beautiful. And I'd gone through a really rough freshman year, um, gained the freshman 15, maybe more. I mean, it happens to everybody. But the, the thing that struck me so much was that I was a person who lived life at 200 miles an hour my entire life. I was the captain of the varsity basketball team and in show choir and the lead of every musical and all these external accolades. But so many people, you know, would envy those positions or whatever, but they don't, we don't always know what's going on the inside of somebody. And so I took a lot of those things um, with me into college and then those ended up developing into an emotional eating disorder. And so um, I realized kind of my passion for personal development at that moment um, because I really had to work through things and struggle through some, through some things on my own to get to a place of where I really loved and accepted myself, you know, before I could pour into others. So then a year later, um, I had an amazing second year of school and I came home and again, my mother being the wise person that she is, um, just sat me down and was asking me about some of my goals particularly. And, and at this point in time, I was still totally hard and fast pursuing music. But at the same time, I think a lot of us in our entrepreneurial journey, I, I could almost guarantee that we've all had this moment in our lives where we have convinced ourselves that we're doing so much work, but it's all in our heads and we're running on that hamster wheel of why am I getting nothing done and why am I not making money and why am I no, 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 all these things. And we simultaneously compare ourselves at the same time of realizing that we're not actually doing anything. And, and sometimes that can happen for years. And I'm so thankful that, you know, I'm off that train now, but um, I went to a music school of the most talented kids you, you've ever heard of and that you've never heard of. And so many people um, that instantly I was, you know, suddenly a little fish in a very big pond. And that can be a lot for your self-worth. And I think that we take a look at ourselves a lot, even as entrepreneurs in that way of where it's easy to second guess yourself or say, well, what, what, you know, uniqueness do I have to offer? What makes me any different or why do you actually have a, a message that's worth telling or worth somebody paying me for? And so in that moment, um, a year after that first encounter, my mom was asking me about my own dreams. And I, I, I kid you not, I looked on Facebook and um, Miss Nebraska 2013, JC Pokington had just been crowned. And I believe that God just spoke to my heart and was like, you're supposed to do that next year. Like, that's you. And um, I was the girl who still to this day, I play basketball probably a couple days a week with all the guys at the gym. And I like to challenge myself and I'm super competitive. And um, I did that in college all the time. I didn't play in college because you can't do that and be a music major. But um, I was just like, why, why do I want to do this? About it? I didn't even know the phases of competition. I didn't know. I wasn't even living in the same state that I would compete in. I mean, there are all these obstacles against me. There's girls who want to be Miss America since they were five. There's girls with master's degrees, prettier, skinnier, whatever than me. And yet I had this burning desire in my heart. And again, I think we all kind of have that moment in our lives where it's like, do or die where you have an impossible situation at your fingertips. And as entrepreneurs, we have that every single day. We wake up every single day and make a decision, um, kind of do or die. And whether we're going to kind of grind until we can retire when we're 30, we grind until we can have the lifestyle of our dreams. And um, I was just having this conversation with my sister actually earlier today of, you know, mindset is so important. And it's, there's a reason why so many entrepreneurs talk about mindset. Um, and that's because great. You can have all the, you can have great habits. You can have great actions. 
Um, you can even have a great message, but if you're not putting all that together um, with knowing who you are, knowing your why, and uh, really every day being able to wake up and go to bed loving who you are and knowing who you are, eventually, you know, just your own effort, and you're going to get really tired. And if you don't know why you do the things that you do or for whom you do the things that you do, um, it's going to get pretty old pretty fast. So to make a very long story short, um, I was completely underqualified. I didn't even know, like I said, the phases of competition or anything like that. I'd only watched Miss America one year before that. I don't tell people that that often. <laughs> and um, this is the Miss America system, which is different than the Miss USA system. Some people don't know that. And um, so long story short, only nine months later, I was Miss Nebraska. And 11 weeks later, I was at Miss America and um, on national television vision, doing my thing. And, uh, it's just amazing how, when you really not just set a goal, but you literally have to train your mindset to observe yourself at the finish line. And because of everything that I'd been through with an emotional eating disorder and learning to love myself and learning that most external problems are actually an internal fix that then will change the external problem. Um, I, I just, it was so cool how God was equipping me to face those challenges and to face those impossibilities like becoming Miss Nebraska, which is a full-time speaking job. I spoke to hundreds of thousands of people within one year, put 40,000 miles on the Miss Nebraska car that they gave me, gave up a year of my school and it paid for the last year of my college. So something like that, where a year before that, it wasn't even in my game plan at all, but we continue to put one foot in front of the other and, and take those steps. And, um, you know, our plan really starts to unfold as opposed to just getting discouraged that, we're not in that place of victory yet or that we may not be at that 100% yet, but we need to continue to make those 1% increases every day or every week or however often they they do help us move forward, you know? And so then I ended up going back to school last year and I started my company, Best You, um, last June and it's been going awesome and um, have an amazing community of people and I that's kind of how my personal development story came to be just because it's been my life and I really had to figure out who I am and figure out how to help myself before I could help people. And I coach and I teach from a spiritual, physical, emotional, and financial perspective. Um, so everything from, yeah, like I said, learning who you are and, and helping people even define their passions. Um, because like I thought I was going to do one thing and I still do music and I still travel and play and stuff like that. Um, but like helping people unlock things in them that they had no idea even existed. Like I was so scared to speak in front of a single two people, you know, one, two people two years ago. And now it's what I do with my life. Um, and, and so it's just really cool to unlock and help people blossom in all these different areas and to help them discover that, you know, they may think that it's one thing that's holding them back, but it's actually probably just something internal or a crack in their foundation or um, a crack in their mindset or just something that they do themselves that is actually hurting them and not helping them. Um, so it's a little bit of my story. Um, I just love people a lot and it's a blessing to get to help people every single day and um, be in a position where you're an influencer. And I'm certainly, um, you know, we never arrive. Life is a journey. And I think that the second that we think that we arrive is when we stop growing. And that's, that's not a place that I like to be. Um, I can blame it on partially my personality type too, which is just like intense needs to grow every second of every day. Um, but yeah, like what a cool place as entrepreneurs where no matter what we're doing, I mean, you could own your own plumbing business and still be helping people in a sense, you know, because you're servicing that need, you're using your gifts, um, for the betterment of the world. And I think that that's what's so cool. And even just what the world is moving towards is more and more entrepreneurship. So, um, I'd say that's kind of my story in a nutshell. That's awesome. That's a, that's a great <laughs> story, Megan. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, you know, I do want to kind of dig a little bit deeper and, um, you know, maybe have, have you clear some things up. So in the beginning, you said you were gung ho about music, um, and, and that's where your passions really lied. So, um, it's a two part question. One, what did you play? Uh, what kind of music did you play? Um, and then two, how did that passion for the music translate into future success? Like, what did you learn from that? Yeah, that's, those are great questions. Um, so for one, I was a contemporary vocal major in college with a minor in music business. And so Belmont University, anyone watching is interested in music and is younger, highly suggest looking into that school. Um, but it's one of the only schools that offer that type of degree. And it basically means non-classical music. So I never wanted to do opera. Um, that's great. And people are super talented who do that. But that was not me. Um, I was raised in a very... Um, 
like I <laughs> say, not to be not to be non politically correct, but I was raised in a very like tall, skinny white family that you would totally think is one thing. But I'm so thankful that I got to travel so much as a young person and be experienced, um, be be engulfed in so many different cultures that my family can really just relate to anybody. And I'm so appreciative of that. And so my musical style um, is Christian music, but I call it kind of urban worship. Like it has R&B, uh, R&B vibes along with kind of modern contemporary Christian worship. And uh, what I love about Christian music in general is that it's the lyrics and it's the message. And then really, you know, beyond that, it can translate into everything from rap to country to electronic, I mean, to anything, kind of what you're in the mood for. So um, my parents are, as songwriters have have written every type of genre, every type of influence, and, um, you know, with obviously some threads throughout that. But I'm primarily a vocalist, and I play cello, piano, and guitar. Um, everybody in my family plays, like, three or five instruments and sings, and we're literally, like, a partridge family, and it's hilarious. Like, people who follow me on social media and stuff like that are always just like, we long for the days when you post stuff about your family, because we just get together, and it's always a musical explosion of things. Um, and then second of all, so that the passion of music, like I said, isn't gone. Um, but I think as entrepreneurs, what we struggle with and, and specifically with my personality type, which is ENTP and Myers-Briggs, it's the visionary, um, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs are visionaries. The thing that we constantly battle and struggle against is, um, like I like to say, there's a ditch on either side of every issue. So this ditch would be, um, which is the one that I fall into, is as a visionary, you're always futuristic. And um, on my five strengths, that's my number one strength too. And again, not that we box ourselves into these tests or whatever, but they are very helpful. And so, um, as a futuristic person, every action in my life, I'm constantly analyzing how it affects my six months and my future and a year down and five year plan, all these things, which is amazing. Cause it's, it's so important to visualize yourself in the future. Or you won't get anywhere. Right. But then the ditch on this side would be somebody who's only present and can, can is really good at like a list or details or whatever, but never thinks the future. And really, I feel like success is somewhere in the middle. And that's something that I really, 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 really had to learn because I'm naturally left-brained. Um, and I live in time rather than through time, which that means that if I don't set my list and say, okay, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, these are the things that I'm doing, all of a sudden it's 3 p.m. and I don't get anything done. And so that was a huge lesson learned, I think, during my Miss Nebraska year just because I cold-called all of my appointments. I booked all my schools, booked – you know, my full speaking calendar of conferences and all these different things, I was traveling all over the place. So you had to kind of have 10 hats in the air at the same time and juggle all these things and get stuff done. And if you didn't, guess what? You're representing your entire state and that looks pretty bad. So I think that um, when we set natural time limits or constraints or just natural things that um, force us to really focus, um, it, it causes us to grow. And so um, I would say that that middle year that I had to take off of school because of Miss Nebraska really helped me not only in my music, but then also define obviously that passion for speaking. Cause that's what I was doing full time. And, um, I think that, um, I was just saying this earlier today too, during intense times of pressure, um, you know, a diamond doesn't become a diamond just cause it's laying around. It's because it goes under intense pressure and, you know, not that we should put pressure necessarily isn't the right word in our lives, but maturity comes from, when we go through things, you know what I mean? Maturity comes from when we have to figure things out and maturity comes from when we have to adapt to situations kind of on the fly. And that all stems from knowing who we are too. If we don't know who we are and again, these very foundational identity principles, then it's really easy for things to shake us. And so, um, I hope I'm answering the question, but, um, I, you know, I just was, that was such a time of growth of finding out who I wanted to be and who I was. Um, that I think going back to the first thing that I said, the number one thing that entrepreneurs struggle with is trying to juggle too many hats, but not in a good way. And so for me, it was like, I knew I was athletic. I knew I was super passionate about music. I knew that I could, you know, I could get into the acting or modeling world if I wanted to. I used to do that when I was younger, but it's like at the end of the day and people would always say, Oh, Megan, well, you're good at everything. But what's the phrase? You don't want to be a jack of all traits and a master of none. And, and I got tired, frankly, of moving forward in 20 areas where like my mom, my mom used to always say, you know, it's hard to be good at everything. But like, to be honest, it kind of is like, if you think about it and if you're just good at your one thing and you do your one thing, you can get to zero to a hundred pretty fast rather than trying to have 20 different directions and slowly making this progress, which doesn't feel like progress to us. But then we get frustrated when we're in frustrated, when we're frustrated, then our gifts are suppressed. When our gifts are suppressed and we're not creative, then our brain doesn't work and we don't want to think we don't want, you know, and there's just all these gifts that we need to be working 
that we need to that we need to be working for us um, for us to be productive. So I think that I also just learned the lesson of like, what do you really want? What are the top five things you want? What are the top three things you want? There's this story that I always tell when I'm speaking, um, and I wish I actually knew who this was talking about. But there is this multi 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 like billionaire, so that narrows it down. But um, a guy and and somebody asked him to speak for like one of the biggest conferences in the world, and they asked his secretary, and they're like, "We'll give you five hundred thousand dollars to speak." And they asked the secretary and she was like, no, they go, okay, we'll give you a million dollars for you to speak. No, we'll get, we'll give you a million, five, no, two. Okay. You name the price. We'll, we'll, whatever it is for 30 minutes. I think it was like 30 minutes for him to speak. No. And they finally asked, what the heck is going on? Why would you not, why would you not let us give you $3 million to give your advice? And he, and his response was, that's not one of the top three things on my list of goals for this year. And he literally doesn't focus on anything else. He owns, I mean, over bought and sold over, you know, 20, 50 companies, something like that. I'm butchering the story, but it's something amazing like that, where it's just like the answer was it, it wasn't in his top three goals. And I love that because so often we try to do a thousand things and, you know, it doesn't actually make us see progress in anything. And that's the point of being an entrepreneur is to actually get to where we want to go. And oftentimes we hurt ourselves by I think trying to do too many things. So that really helped me in my progress and the transition from, okay, just music or how do I implement speaking? And it's all kind of ministry and then, you know, loving on people, coaching. And I finally just decided let's focus on my, you know, two things and get going with that. And it's, it's just been changed my life. So that's incredible. And, you know, I actually know the exact story you're talking about. It was Richard Branson. Oh, who, awesome. That was, the, that was the billionaire. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, uh, but I still think it's important because it was such a big um, part of your life. So you said you moved at 18 years old. You moved out of your parents' house to mm -hmm. pursue your music. Mm -hmm. Well, going on your own and, and really striving to accomplish things as an individual, that changes people. And, and you learn different things and you grow and, and you know things happen. So... At that time, when you when you struck out on your own, what do you think were some of the biggest takeaways from that? That's an amazing question. Um, I don't think I've ever I don't think I've been asked that in a long time. Um, well, to be honest, what, what was so interesting was that, and I, I I just had a speaking event last night to like a ton of seventh through twelfth graders, so they actually asked me a question similar to this because the parents wanted to know what you know what's your bit of advice for freshmen in college or whatever. And when you think about it, they're even if you move an hour away from home, you know, certainly there are going to be a little bit fewer aspects that are totally different as opposed to moving to a whole new state where you don't know anybody. But, um, the first thing that I would say is that our association is so important. And, um, I was I'm very thankful to go to an awesome school with some awesome peers. Like, to be honest, do I need a private school, $160,000 degree to do what I want to do? Absolutely not. And like, of course, the entrepreneur now is like, what would I do with $160,000? You know, I had scholarship, praise God, like all this stuff. But that puts things into perspective, right? Which I encourage people, anybody who's watching this, who may be, you know, at that stage in your life, like, I'm not saying don't go to college, but really think about what you want and what you need and what, what's going to help you get there. Because what you invest your time in is what you'll become and what you'll think about and what, where you'll go. And, and school is an investment, so it needs to be worth something. Like, and don't be shamed into just doing the norm of everybody else. So that's a side note. Um, but really what I learned, yeah, your associations are super important because like we've all heard, you know, you are the summation of the five people that you hang the most around. Um, I wish that I would have sought out mentors at an earlier age and I'm not sure that I really knew that that was a thing. Um, and so now as a mentor myself, um, that's something that I really enjoy a lot is working with specifically college age students just because that is the time when we're figuring stuff out. You know, our brain isn't fully developed till we're 25 and we still are in that processing and learning and growing stage. I think we always, we always should be, but um, even just genetically, that literally is what's going on. And so it's a real joy to help people kind of define that part of themselves. And I just, I wish that I would have surrounded myself with people who knew more than me. Again, not like I know everything, but just, I think it's easy to get comfortable sometimes. Um, or, you know, as a lot of us as entrepreneurs are alphas, um, it's, it's easy to just be the alpha and, and cause you're still going to grow on your own, but you need people to pull you up. Um, and so that's something that I would say. The next thing is, um, you know, just not letting your environment overcome you and overwhelm you. Um, even when things are new, 
uh, having that emotional intelligence and, and I think maturity, one of the biggest signs of maturity is, as I always tell people, being able to slow down a situation while you're in it and while you're having emotions or while you're frustrated or while you have a paper due that you haven't started in eight hours or, you know, these different things, being able to slow things down and analyze them, asking yourself why, asking yourself who, what, where, when, you know, why, when, all those things. Um, that's something that I certainly learned during my Miss Nebraska year. For example, I'd be driving six and a half, seven hours to the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. I live on the populated side of Nebraska. We have a million people in my city. Yes, people actually live in Nebraska, people. Um, on the western side of Nebraska, there are not actual humans for the most part. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I'd be driving six and a half hours to a tiny town that I've never heard of in the middle of actually nowhere. And I had Sprint and Sprint doesn't exist literally for six hours of Nebraska. So that's super fun because you get to set your Wi-Fi or set your uh, GPS when you have Wi-Fi. And then it's like, good luck, <laughs> pretty much. So what happened was one time I had 40 miles of construction Yep. And I even left an hour, like 45 minutes hour early for this event. I'm freaking out. I'm trying to drive over the speed limit, but there's bumper to bumper traffic. And at the end of the day, I'm like, this is completely out of my control. Can't call the principal, can't call the school because my internet doesn't work to even find the phone number. And if I tried to call my phone, it doesn't work. So it's just like in those moments, you're like, okay, like me worrying about something is literally not going to do anything. It's just going to raise my cortisol levels. It's going to stress me out even more. It's going to, you know, and you have to learn to control your thought life. And, um, that is probably the number one thing that I work with people on. Um, just because it is so important. It is so important. I think we all look at people who really have a great emotional intelligence and control of when they're, when all hell is breaking loose around them, what are they acting like? You know, what are they saying? What are they like just observing those people? And that adaptability is going to get entrepreneurs in general so far. Um, I think it increases your, your likability, kind of that it factor that we have, um, because it's just that presence of like, okay, I mean, I'm going to do what I can do and I'm going to control what I can control, but some things you just can't. And so we make the most of it after that. We move on. We accept responsibility. If it's our fault, that's huge. Um, and you know, we, we grow from it. We see, like I had to analyze a lot of times, okay, maybe I just know that I should leave an hour and a half earlier for these circumstances. And, you know, it was kind of my fault at the end of the day. Um, and sometimes that's really hard, but if we just make a promise to ourselves and, and this is what I did when I moved home to, or moved away, like my family's not here. I don't want to be that person who calls my mom every five seconds for something, which I wasn't, but I have a really strong relationship with them and that's not wrong by any means. Um, but just allowing yourself to bloom where you're planted too. Like if you know that it's going to be a unique or a new situation, um, where everything is new to you, um, like getting involved and connecting yourself and using your gifts and the resources that are available to you to make the most out of every situation and not everything's going to go your way. But I think that people would be surprised at how much they can control if they are proactive and if they are willing to actually listen around them, listening is a skill and it's different than hearing. Um, and, and <laughs> let me tell you, a Miss America interview is the hardest thing in the entire history of the world. Um, it's seven people in front of you, including Gary Vaynerchuk was one of my judges. Fun fact. Didn't know who he was at the time. Kind of did, but like, man, I would do so many things differently. Oh my gosh. Anyways, but Gary Vaynerchuk was one of my judges. Um, so is Donald Driver, a few other people. And it's, you can imagine Gary, first of all, on in an interview, he's going to pull no, he doesn't care. He doesn't care what comes out of his mouth. And so it's seven people asking you any question in the entire world for 10 minutes, interrupting each other. Should we have boots on the ground or drones in the air to fix ISIS tomorrow? And then they ask you, what's your platform? And they ask you, what do you like to do with your girlfriends on the weekend? Just adaptability, you know, but all of those things, I think as we, as we gain those um, types of values, it just helps us move higher up the ladder because it's just a sign of maturity. So those, those would be some of the highlights I think of what I wish I would have known more moving away. And certainly the things that I just had to learn being away from everything that did make me comfortable and the things that I did know. Absolutely. And so, you know, you talked a little bit about how you like to play basketball a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think there is a, there are a few common traits. If, if you talk to entrepreneurs and study successful people, there are some things that all the people kind of do. Uh, one of those is keeping themselves physically at physically fit, physically active. 
Uh, how important has that been to your success? And um, where'd your love of basketball come from? Yeah. Um, well, my dad coached me since I was little. My sister is a three-time All-American in college right now, and it's her senior year. Um, we are just a basketball playing family. I'm six feet tall, and I'm the shortest person in my family. So that is a hilarious story. I always tell people I'm the runt of the family, and they don't get it. Um, my brother's six seven. Like I said, my sister's six two. Um, and so we were just a basketball family. Um, we always say it's the greatest sport in the world. Sorry, everybody else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, and I, I love, I think just as a, again, the, the type of person that I am personally, like the sport in general, I just really like how quick it is very competitive. So I like how you can score a hundred and something points in a game. Um, I like the tactile difficulty. Like you have to shoot, you have to dribble, you have to pass, you have to read the ball, you have to read the other players, you have to rebound. And there's all these different things. Um, which again, of course there are skills in other sports, um, but I'm just biased, but physical fitness is huge for me. Um, just because again, I did go through an emotional eating disorder where food became my God, it became my life. It became everything that controlled me. And yet the second that I put food in my mouth, I was condemned. I had guilt, shame and condemnation coming in. Um, and I just had those, you know, thoughts of the enemy in my head and it was horrible. And I, I remember, you know, sitting in class, comparing myself to other people because I was so unhappy with what I looked like and who I was. And it didn't matter any accolade. I could have won the, the greatest award in the world. But if we've accepted that we're nothing and that we're not worth it and that we're failures or that we're unworthy of anything, then you're never going to get there. And so um, it was so cool how something like I thought, again, was an external issue, food, exercise, whatever. I was exercising six days a week. I'm huge in the lifting and all these things. Um none of that was helping because I, I was completely oblivious even to the real problem. And so, um, but from a physiological standpoint, exercise is so important just because it does release endorphins. Um, I was just talking to somebody today, like they were having a bad day and then, um, they went and worked out and then they texted me after and they're like, Oh no, I'm good now. Like working out, lifting always is just like a natural antidote, you know, kind of for stress. And so I highly encourage everybody um, and you may be saying, oh, well, you know, I hate lifting or I hate this or I don't play basketball. Find something that you do love. There's really no excuse nowadays. I'm just saying, I'm not being mean. I'm just being real. Like you can go find blog a online. You can go find tone it up, go to orange theory fitness, go find a, you know, you can sign up for a group personal training. You can go to the YMCA where legitimately this happens at my YMCA. There are old guys working out in jeans and dress shirts, you guys. No one's looking at you. No one cares. There's this old Asian lady who walks her, who who sits and falls asleep and watches her daughter, like, walk on the treadmill for hours. I see it. No one's looking at you. And literally, we we are selfish thinkers naturally. And we convince ourselves that everybody else is thinking about us. But it's not true because guess what? We are naturally wired selfishly unless we get out of that and learn to grow out of that. So they're probably thinking about themselves and that look that you thought somebody just gave you or the judgment that you thought somebody just passed on you. First of all, if they actually are judging you, then sorry, they're a loser and they need to get over themselves um, because you're there to you're there to preserve your temple. You're there to build yourself up both internally and externally. You're there to feel good about yourself. You're there to grow and to learn and to be healthy. And that's what it's all about. But there are a hundred different ways to work out. You could sit there and just go on the rowing machine or the stepping machine or bike. My bike at the YMCA, you can catch dragons on this thing. Not kidding. You drive it like this and you legitimately can catch coins and dragons. Like I encourage this older dude next to me on bike like two days ago who was having a bad time and I told him you could catch dragons and it made his day so you never know 30 seconds you can make someone's day just by catching some dragons on a bike and you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger just find what's best for you and um that's definitely something that I am an advocate of because you know it kind of took me a little bit to find my groove but even if you just like the time when you see that say tiny little baby muscle if you're a guy and you're trying to like gain muscle or you see a girl and you're like I lost one pound like sometimes that's all it takes for you to actually get on that trajectory of success for that specific area of your life and I think that that's really important because sometimes it just it just like with business like it takes that first time that you that somebody pays you for something that you do and you're like I'm worth it you know what I mean and that is then from that moment on you're like I can do this so I think that that's a huge part of um, physical fitness too for what it does for us in every other aspect of our life. So, Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. And, you know, there there's a lot of scientific research behind uh, actually what you're saying that, that supports what you're saying. You know, if you are lethargic and you don't exercise, then you, you physically will not have the energy 
to yeah. do the things that you need to do. I mean, you're going to be slower throughout the day. Your mind's not going to be as sharp. Uh, I was actually talking with a very successful entrepreneur uh, recently. We were having dinner, and he says that he likes to go through cycles with his fitness. He likes to he likes to eat really healthy and work out from January all the way to Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and you know, from Thanksgiving to, to the end of December, he, you know, he gives himself a break and, and he, he kind of lets go a little bit, but he says he always notices in those, that later November, December area, time period, that he's, he's forgetting things, he's slower, he doesn't have as much energy, he can't get things done, and then the mm-hmm. second he starts picking it back up in January, he's sharp as a whip again. And so, yeah. you know, I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying, and there really is no excuse to not getting out there and not getting active. So, you know, I'm yeah. glad you brought up that point. But I want to talk a little bit about um, about personal development because you said that when you had that conversation with your mother, um, it kind of clicked for you that, okay, I love personal development. This is important and I want to do this. How has that, and, and I know you've talked about it a little bit, but I want, I want you to go a little bit more in depth of how has that impacted your life and what benefits have you seen from being involved in that sort of uh, work, if you will? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, I mean, like I said, it's just how cool that we get to have a life where we actually get to see somebody go from point A to point B. Um, and I mean, I'm just going to be real. Like a lot of people look at me and they're like, Oh, well you were Miss Nebraska and you've had all this success and you're only 23 and you've done more than I'll ever do in my whole lifetime. And, and it's just, it's funny to me. And yeah, I'm a really confident person. I like, I have my stuff together, but I'm always learning. But like, it's funny to me because I know the person that I was standing in front of that mirror five years ago. And I sympathize with that, you know? And again, it's, it's not ever like, I don't ever ask for people's pity. I'm not asking for people to feel sorry for me because obviously I've grown from that point, but there is something to say about, you know, a lot of times, even what we end up doing in life is connected to something that we've been through. Um, and that's why it's an area of passion for us. And, um, I mean, even just last night when I talked to probably 70 kids or so, um, it's just cool that being transparent and being open with people and giving them real strategies for success, um, again, like it's, it's just so funny. They could even think that they have, it, I've worked with people like they think it's a financial problem, but it really is an emotional problem or, you know, it's always something I like, I, I work with every client on, um, just kind of going through different, what I call masks that we wear in our life. And, um, you know, it could be that we're overspending, but really the mask that we're wearing is that fear of ever being successful or the, the, the root of that poverty mindset that we really need to work on because of where we came from. Right. And, um, in the same way where, you know, like physical fitness things, you know, we, we could work out five days a week like me and you could convince yourself that you, your nutrition's on point, but you have no idea that you're snacking all the time. And that's why I, I, um, teach and I coach from a position of spiritual, physical, emotional, and financial development, because those really are, if you, if you take a look at that, that's kind of a 360 perspective into our life. Um, there's relationships as well, but I don't pretend to be a relationship coach. And, um, and you know, again, we can fix a lot of those principles by just becoming a better version of ourselves, um, which will then in turn flow into our relationships. And there are other people for that too. So, um, but I, I just can't describe how cool it is. Um, I've had 17 year old guys in a high school walking up to me and shaking my hand like a gentleman saying, I'm going to treat my peers better. And I had 30 minutes with them in a crowd of 500 people. And they're almost in tears because they've been checked in their spirit and their heart. And they're like, I, I've not been a good guy. And I had no idea, you know, and that's a very real thing. I mean, you don't know how that, that 1%, one degree shift in their compass doesn't seem like a lot, but after a hundred years that, you know, after a year, whatever, after a year, those points start to become farther and farther apart and, apart, and you can be really glad that you made that one percent, that one degree shift. And um, I just had testimony after testimony and story after story of all these people, young and old and in between, um, who just making these little changes, which actually can be really big changes um, in, in people's lives, just sometimes instantly fix things. Sometimes it takes longer. Um, I've had a friend that I've been working on 
for three years, um, not even coaching, but just being in their life, you know, because we're all influencing other people, whether we think that we are or not, and just planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. And it hurts sometimes because people are going to slap you in the face and then you turn the other cheek and they slap you again. Um, and, and that's the things that we deal with. It's the things that we deal with as entrepreneurs because we're, we're the ones tilling the ground for the first time. You know what I mean? Um, we're going into places where nobody else has gone before. And, um, Sometimes we hit hot spots that people don't like, hot buttons that people don't like. But um, I have this friend that I've been working with for three years. He doesn't know it. <laughs> and um, just, you know, planting these seeds and these ideas. And, and finally, just a, about a month ago or so, he's really starting to discover his passions, you know, and he quit school and um, is using that money to fuel his business and is, is really discovering what he wants to do and is taking steps towards that. And so um, now we're moving into more of a coaching relationship, but that ended up being something that I didn't even have to go to him about. But you can see the transformation of his heart and his mindset and his habits are finally starting to change. And all it took was him deciding that it was worth it, you know, deciding that partying every Friday night and Saturday night and Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday was a waste of money, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, no judgment whatsoever, whatever. People make their own decisions for adults. But for him, like, you know, I said, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't complain about finances and then spend all this money on, it could be alcohol, it could be anything. It could be other worthless things, you know, whatever, five, six days a week. There's, there's where your money is. Like, let's check your bank statements, you know, things like that, where we have these masks that we have convinced ourselves, no, I'm fine. Like there, I, there's just no more money. There's just, I'm not, there's nowhere else that I could cut out. And then people go to Starbucks twice a day, every day, you know, or just little things where if we take these tiny fine tunings in our life or check what you're speaking out of your mouth over yourself, check what, you know, what you're pouring into yourself. Are you listening to positive audios? Are you, you know, if you're a Christian, are you reading your Bible? Are you surrounding yourself with other people who are like-minded to you, whatever that is like, or are you just relying on all of the things the media are trying to tell you or friends who are kind of lower than you? Sorry, who are not where you are maybe yet. And, and I think that's one of the greatest things about my job. You know, it's, it's not a job. It's just like, you just get to help people every day. And then whether they're an entrepreneur or whether they're not, um, they get to be the best versions of themselves and that makes them happy. And that makes me happy. And, um, those things have ripple effects into the whole world and, um, they really do. And sometimes it's just a little tiny change and sometimes it takes longer, but it's all worth it. So I think, um, and, you know, because I've had to deal with that myself. I, I had to pract I practice what I preach. Like, I never tell somebody to do something that I'm not going to do. Um, and I think that our generation and millennials in general are really looking for genuine people who are going to cut the crap and tell us what works. Because um, we see, we get most of our news from Facebook. You know, we we can go find anything. We're self-starters. We're people who, for the most part, want to make an impact. And we just want to know what works. We want to know what the truth is. We want, we want people who won't lie to us and won't try to be somebody or act all high minded or act better. Just be, just be you and, and, and just be authentic and provide value. Like, and that's what we get to do. So I, I love it. It's pretty awesome. That is, that is cool. And, and, you know, I think one of the best parts of personal development and, you know, I can't really speak for anybody else, but I think it's knowing that every single day you are bettering yourself. Yeah. And you're a stronger person. You're a smarter person. You're you're a better person every single day. And it's because you're taking, like you said, those little steps. You take those little steps every single day and you become a better person. One of my really good friends, um, he's, uh, he's, he's about our age. He, he just graduated from college. Yeah. And he has this concept that he's obsessed with right now. And he always says, one brick a day. Just he said, and, and I love that concept. And uh, you know, yeah. I think you, I think you can kind of see where I'm going with this. But he says, do one thing that is powerful for you every single day. Do one thing that makes you a better person. Accomplish one goal that's going to further your path or, or help you further along your own path. And and as long as you lay that one brick every single day, eventually you'll have this massive structure. And so, you know, I think that's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And he, and you know, he's a 20 some year old guy. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so to, to compliment what you, what you said, you know, I think that, that what you said was, was really spot on. So, you know, we talked about a lot of different things. Uh, we talked about your past. I want to talk a little bit more about your past. Um, and then, and then we'll kind of move on from that. But 
You said you were competitive, okay? Mm-hmm. How important has that competitiveness, that that uh, that killer instinct, how important has that been to your success? I love that. Um, well, I think as some my cat, <laughs> that was my cat walking across. The- <laughs> Hello, everybody. That's my whole cat. Um, he should get down the table. So, um, competition. Well, I think that it's interesting because there's a positive and a negative connotation to that. So negatively, obviously, if we're only competing against ourselves because we don't know who we are, we are emotionally shaky, we are insecure, and we're competing to prove that we're worth something, you know, which I think we all do a little bit, obviously. But if that's our only intention of, I actually don't believe in myself and this is actually coming from a complete place of insecurity and, or, you know, my, my, my somebody told me that I had to be, be this, or, you know, just coming from an inauthentic place, um, where it's, it's not competition just because I want to better myself every day. I know that as I become better, like you said, we have more to give to the world. We have more, um, we can operate at a higher capacity at a higher efficiency. And, um, you know, just like an athlete, you want 10 out of 10. If you're shooting three pointers, you want to make all 10. If you're shooting free throws, you want to make all 10. You don't want to make nine. You don't want to make two. You want to make 10 because you want to be the best because you know that that's not only going to help you, it's going to pad your stats, but it's going to help the whole team. So, um, just like you want a triple double more than a double double, you know what I mean? Like rebounds and points and assists, whatever. Um, and it's because in the end it maximizes everything around you, even though, If you were to just look at the stats, they'd just say your name and this. But if people look at the whole story, again, there are those ripple effects. And um, so, yeah, I'm extremely competitive. And I think that you have to have that killer mindset because also I always say this when I'm doing pageant coaching with people. Like, let's be honest. If you walk into that interview, 90 over 90 percent of how you translate whether you're the best is your body language and your body language comes from being congruent within yourself from knowing who you are when you walk in that door. And it could be any interview. It could be, it could be this interview right now. You know, like if I'm just sitting here, like my body language is like this and I'm like scared to answer your question. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what's the next question come? Like nothing about that makes you think that I'd be a good coach. You know what I mean? Um, but the more that we know who we are and we present that positive package because in the secret place when no one else is looking, we are working on ourselves. We're working on our craft. We're, you know, whatever it is, building funnels at two in the morning on a Friday night. You know, we're whatever. Like we're reading books. We are surrounding ourselves. Like all those things I consider even competitive because we're making ourselves the best. And so then you walk into any situation, you you aren't afraid to ask to charge whatever it is that you need to charge for your services. You're not afraid to um, set high standards or high boundaries in your life. Um, because you, you have to know that you're the best because if you believe that anybody else is the best, then why, why should they hire you? Why should they go for you and not somebody else? And again, I, I want to make sure that I say it's not about perfection because that's never something that we can achieve. And like I said, we never arrive, but I would say that that's probably one of the most important things It's yeah, be competitive so that you have that natural kind of like, um, like they talk about in the, the book, the four hour work week, like set timers for yourself, you know, set, um, completely unnecessary. I always tell people like, I literally will be like coming out with a new book or something and set like a completely irrational time limit on it just so I'll actually do it. And it's like, yeah, I'm sweating and every fiber of my being is like, Oh my gosh, I gotta get this done. But I get it done, you know, like, or finding a way to naturally make yourself feel that way so that you work that hard. Um, but without the irrational, maybe actual time when you need to release something like I do. Um, so something like that, where it's again, finding balance There's a ditch on both sides of everything. Um, but I think competition can be extremely healthy. And when you're an entrepreneur, you have to be competitive because you want to be the best or else people will go with somebody else. And again, I don't mean for that to sound mean. It's just, you kind of gotta, like, you gotta have that alpha in you a little bit. So Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I was actually watching an interview of Mark Cuban. Um, and, you know, he, he's a little bit controversial. Some people like him, some people don't. But mm-hmm. I think we can all agree the man's very successful and he knows what he's doing when it comes to business. And so 
he said this one thing uh, when you know the interviewer was asking him about um, his his learning habits. You know, how does he educate himself? And he says, "I'm reading constantly. You know, I'm always trying to better myself because I know that every single one of my competitors is, and excuse my language, but trying to kick my ass." And he's mm-hmm. like, "I'm a competitive guy. You know, he owns the Dallas Mavericks. He don't want to <laughs> lose. Yeah. He's absolutely not going to lose." And so. You know, he wants to be that guy who's on the forefront. He's leading. He's the one competing and and striving for greatness. Because like you said, I don't think, and I agree with you completely, I don't think the goal should be perfection. But I think you should always strive for for greater things and strive to be better. And, and, you know, just try to to accomplish, accomplish as much as you possibly can. So, you know, I think what you said was profound and, 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 you know, I'm glad you said it. So... One more question on, uh, on on a little bit of your past, um, and and you know this one's not as much about your past, but how important? And you touched on this a little bit. How important is mindset? Okay, first of all, it's a two part question, and for people who may not be at the spot that they need to be in order to succeed, how do you make that transition? How do you how do you improve and better your mindset? Yeah. That, those are perfect questions. So your your mindset really is everything. Um, I could talk about this for so long, but I'm literally going to look at the time and put like a two minute time around myself. So your thoughts are electromagnetic signals in your brain. Okay. Um, science has shown that they literally look like tree like structures in your brain. And we have two kinds of thoughts, positive and negative. And like I said, I'm a Christian, so I believe that those are in line with the Word of God. Some people don't, but it's undeniable that there are positive and negative. You can look at them on a graph, and the positive thoughts, they literally look like these trees, and they're beautiful. And as you think positive thoughts, thoughts of life, when you confess these things over yourself, it literally makes you smarter. It's It's been proven, you know, like the old, the old test where it's like, let's have one plant listen to classical and one listen to death metal, whatever. You know, and, and there even are results that way. And so you're like, well, that's not nothing, you know. And so they've done numerous different studies um, on words and the power of words and what they do. And, you know, from my perspective, like God spoke the whole earth into motion and he, he created everything with his words. And it's it's bottom line is, you know, when we – even just like having this conversation, like it makes us feel good to talk about positive things, to talk about forward thinking things. And if you, if you were to just watch yourself and your words for one day, um, like for example, I was working with the kids last night about this. Like I wanted them to just write down their words for one day. And this is a great action item. Um, and to just really be conscious of what comes out of your mouth, having a bad day. And then notice how those words then affect your emotions and affect your mindset and affect your thinking because they absolutely positively are tied. And when we think and speak negative words rigorously and frequently, um, it literally also changes our, our DNA down to a cellular level in a very negative way. And those thoughts that looked healthy literally start to shrivel up and die. You can go look on this on Google if you don't believe me, whatever. Dr. Caroline Leaf, she's one of the most amazing neuroscientists of all time. She has tons of books about it, 40 years of research, and it literally just looks like this like shriveled up thing that's just like, I mean, it's death, you know? And so, again, you don't have to believe me to that standpoint, but just try it, and I guarantee you it'll work. And it's the same reason why people in real estate, people in personal development, Tony Robbins, you know, all these different people, life coaches, this coaches, business coaches, I mean, it's, it's undeniable that staring yourself in the face and confessing these things, they say it takes 21 days to form a habit. I mean, those are all the same principles. Because guess what? The person that we spend the most time with is ourself. It's our, ourselves, you guys. And we don't think that. But so our self-talk, whether that's positive or negative, what we say to ourselves, you're talking to yourself all the time. Okay. So many thoughts. You guys, we have so many thoughts, like thousands upon thousands upon thousands, even in a minute, you know? And so if you think about, well, wow, if my identity's off and if I don't love myself, and again, doesn't mean arrogantly, whatever, although I think all of us have to be a little arrogant. Sorry, like we kind of do. You kind of have to think that you're it, like you do a little bit, Um, which is, I think is awesome, but I'm an alpha, so whatever. But um, you you kind of have to, you, you think about, okay, if my thoughts of my own self are not good, then how the heck am I loving on others? How am I being a blessing to others? How am I, what am I extending to everybody around me if inside is peace crap, to be honest? So your mindset is super important. Um, and for people who may not be there yet, um, 
Well, a couple things. So I have a couple of resources that I have um, that I've either created or just used of other people's that have really helped me. But for example, I have a whole wall in my room. Again, you don't have to be this extensive. Obviously, I'm a personal development coach. But even just start with five or ten things that you can speak over your life, speak over yourself, whether they're scriptures, whether they're encouraging quotes, whether they're just facts, whether they're places that you want to get to write down. I encourage you about 10. That's a great place to start and promise yourself, set a timer on your phone, do whatever you need to do to put it somewhere where you'll see it, your bathroom mirror or in your office or above wherever it needs to be and speak over them twice a day, morning and night and observe yourself. And if you have to do it in the mirror, look, force yourself to look yourself in the eyes. And I guarantee you, you believe yourself. You believe your own voice. If you have to speak them out into a little audio voice recorder thingy and listen it to in the car, everyone's in the car all the time. You should be listening to audios, positive things, whatever. But if you hear yourself speak it, you are forming your belief system, whether you know it or not. Um, we implement things through our five senses, and that obviously is one of them. And um, we get things down into our heart by thinking it, by hearing it, which is actually thinking it, you know, like kind of chewing on it. That's what they call meditating on it, coming out your mouth like it's proven that as you focus on something that gets bigger in your mind space, um, it, it becomes a part of your map of the world. It becomes a part of your belief system. And so, um, you know, you may not believe me, whatever, but guess what? The, the fact that you don't believe me is proving my point because you're, you're thinking in a different direction and that's where your mouth is going. That's where your life is going. That's where your habits are going. That's where your mindset's going. And that's of no condemnation. Cause again, I've been there. I've looked at myself and had the crappiest mindset in the entire world, but it's so funny. People who are like, well, that crap doesn't work. I'm like, look what you just said out of your mouth. You know what I mean? And so we all have the same capability to be able to get to where we want to go. And I cannot emphasize enough. It it starts with rebuilding our foundation. Um, and I work a lot with people on, on helping them find those cracks in their foundation, finding um, areas where fear may be holding them back and replacing that um, with those positive things of love and faith. And, and But on a really deep level, I mean, I one of my pet peeves, you guys, I can't even say it. One of my pet peeves is when people are just say these like overarching positive statements and I'm, and there isn't any depth or like details under there of like, but how do we get there? You know what I mean? And so, um, like I said, this is one thing that I actually do every day. I have a list of 10 things I'm going to accomplish in 2017. I have, you know, a bunch, I have a check written out to myself for something that I want to buy my family one day. Um, I have a, all these things that I'm visually looking at. I'm stimulating myself with my eyes, my ears, my mouth, you know, my touch, my everything making myself observe these things to change my own mindset for where I want to go. So if you're not there yet, you have to surround yourself with where you want to go and make sure that you're feeding yourself on those principles more than the world is trying to feed you. You can't and you never will. Absolutely. And, you know, I think I think what you just said about the world feeding you, that is such an important thing to, to understand. And, you know, the people that are that are already on this positive thinking track, they know exactly what you're saying and, and they understand it and they're like, yes, this is exactly what I'm doing, this is exactly what I'm going to continue doing because it works, okay? Mm -hmm. But for the people that they may be, they, they may be saying, you know, that it just doesn't work, like I've tried it. Well, they're listening, to, they're listening to the masses because I would say most people, you know, most people are their employees, they work for other people, they get told what to do, they probably don't have too, too much meaning in their life as far as you know, I'm going to go achieve this incredible goal. Well, that will drag you down. Yep. That will drag you down. And and if what Megan is saying right now is not resonating with you as, oh, I, I know that. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Go back and listen to it. Listen to exactly what she's saying and do the things that she's saying because it is so important. It's so important. You got to get your mind right. And once you get your mind right, everything else is going to fall in place. Yep. So, you know, I think I think it's really great what you what you said about that. So, you know, we talked about your about your past. You gave some really good value uh, as far as, you know, talking about mindset and personal development and all those things. But I want to talk about you right now. What are the biggest things that you're working on, the biggest things that you've accomplished right at this moment? Yeah, um, well, I am just starting to book my 2017 speaking schedule, which is super exciting. Um, so if you guys have a conference coming up or even like women's retreats or, or I speak in churches and schools, conferences, um, things like that, and I really enjoy that. I 
I think I, I really thrive on one-on-one and I can even consider one-on-one like one to a thousand, one to 5,000, whatever. Um, because there's just something about the way that we translate things in person. Um, and I, I really like to provide value in that way just because, uh, it's really funny because like I said, sometimes people have a stigma about your pageant girl, you know, your whatever, just so many different leaders. Um, and I think it's awesome. I mean, people probably even have stigmas about, you know, Tony Robbins, Richard Prince, all these people. And then you, you get in person with them and you realize that they're just a human being and that they really do do these things that they're telling you to do every single day. I don't know if, if a great documentary, if none of y'all have seen it is, um, Tony Robbins, I'm not your guru on Netflix. Um, you get really get a behind the scenes view into his life and what makes him him. And that really blessed me just because it's like, no, like they're not just telling you to do this stuff, you know, like they actually do it. And a lot of them have been kind of to hell and back with these things and have been broke or been sick or been, you know, underdeveloped in these areas. And that's what they're so passionate about. Like that's what they've dedicated their whole life to helping you. So, you know, investigate these people. Yeah. Like great. And make sure that they are who they say they are. But then like so often, like I said in the beginning, don't get so caught up in the analysis, the paralysis of analysis that you never go and do anything. So go to events, go to conferences, you know, bring people into your club or or get connected with people or whatever, because they really are there to help you. Um, So along those lines, I came out with an ebook at the beginning of this year called the best you toolkit and it's 90 pages long and I have an advanced toolkit that's coming out soon too. that's four more modules. But this is like the most. And again, I'm not bragging, but it's good stuff, you guys. Like, it even blessed me when I was writing it. I'm seriously, I was like, man, I'm learning stuff, you know? But that's what you want. Like, this thing is, like, if you want a life overhaul, if you want a mindset overhaul, if you want to uproot some areas of your life that you don't even know maybe holding you back, um, if you really want to see goals in 2017 come to pass, this is it. And um, again, if you know me at all, like, literally, there's nothing that bothers me more than people how do I say this nicely? Charging an abundant amount. And then there's, it's like, if you feel like you're on this wagon wheel circle of like, Oh, and the next thing I'll show you my actual details. And then the next thing I'm going to show you how I actually do this. No, like if, if you're going to ever pay for something with me or whatever, or whoever, just please make sure that they provide you with the actual details and the actual value. And, um, there's been about 500 people who have bought this so far, who have downloaded this so far. I had it free for two weeks. So sorry, that's not anymore. But, um, but it's so cool to see. I mean, I had one girl who was at the end of her rope, who was in master school, um, down in Texas. And she said that she's like, you, you literally don't know how much of at the right time this came. Like, she's like, I almost quit school. I was at the end of my rope. I was ready to call my parents and give up and say, I'm moving home. Like, she's like, I've had some family issues some financial issues. And she's like, I just, it, it finally breathed that hope into me that like, a, I'm not alone in this and that it's going to be okay. And that I can like, I can grow to this place of where I'm in abundance, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially. And, um, we just had a lot of different stories like that, that are really cool of just people who, um, could be at the end of the rope. They could be in the middle of the rope. You know, they could be just beginning their rope, but, um, that's what this is for is if you, if you feel like you need spiritual, physical, emotional, or financial development, there's all elements of that in there. We talk about things like habits, um, but more so in the area of like, you need to set boundaries in your life. And for a lot of times, entrepreneurs, it's with people and not just physical boundaries, not just whatever. Um, it's learning how to set time constraints, learning how to say no, learning how to um, create balance in your life, which like I said, there's a ditch on either side of most issues. And as entrepreneurs and as myself included, I tell a lot of my personal stories just so you guys can see that there really is a way that you can grow through these things. And, um, for me, like I literally am either on or off. Like I don't really have a 75%, don't really have a 50%. And that's something that I've had to learn because especially with women as emotional beings, um, we will let our emotions get out ahead of us or we'll get really excited about something as an entrepreneur. This is men included really excited. And then we think about the details later and then it may be too late. You know what I mean? Just learning how to create really healthy structure in your life. Um, that will literally affect everything in your business, everything in your emotional state and really help you to just not get 
overtired, overworked, overworked to know yourself better um, so that you are operating at peak efficiency. And that's something that, uh, like I said, I've really had to grow in in my life. And I definitely want to teach other entrepreneurs because I know that's something that we struggle with. Um, the other thing that I'm working on right now that just came out last week, um, if you struggle in the area of focus, I have a new book called The Focus Factor, um, Nine Steps for Extreme Productivity. And that's something that I used to, like I said, really struggle with as a left brain person. And um, these are like the nitty gritty nine exact strategies that I use every single day to where I get a crap ton of stuff done every day. Like the amount of things that I can get done in an eight hour period or a 12 hour period or four hour period. Um, you'd be amazed if you actually knew how to set your mind. And again, that's part of mindset is setting your mind um, on the things that you need to get done, how to prioritize, how to eliminate distractions, which is huge, um, how to literally force yourself into a position of being in the zone. Like I literally show you guys how you can force yourself to get in the zone. Because I think especially like with a songwriting background, it's like, oh, well, songs just come to me. And why do songs only come in the shower? And why do I only have my deepest thoughts in the middle of the car when I'm driving? And it's like, well, there's a reason for that is because you're actually getting to a certain place in your mind and there's a place to get back to that. There's a place to force yourself um, in an authentic way to get to that place of where it's just I'm all in and to where you really get stuff done. And that's fulfilling. And then that encourage us, encourages us to continue to go as entrepreneurs and not get so depleted because we're not seeing any progress in our life. So those are the two biggest things I'm working on right now. And the last thing um, that I would love for everybody to join, and you're more than welcome to join, um, I have a group on Facebook called Best You Lifestyle Group, and you can find it at facebook.com slash groups with an S slash best you and that's the letter you group and um it's an awesome community of about 700 christian millennials and we're all just forward thinkers who are developing ourselves like i said in these four areas and there's just awesome dialogue and it's everything's about community and your association and um people are there to ask questions and um, i post encouraging or uplifting or free things every single day and it's not just fluff you know what i mean like oh just nobody needs fluff in our life like we have so many distractions it's super annoying to me if you can't tell and so it's like let's actually provide value people you know and um you know just like this group is and so um again that's best you lifestyle group if you look that up um or yeah that's pretty much what i have going on my social medias are for the most part at my name so at megan underscore swanson it's pretty easy to find me and uh there's just some cool stuff going on and i love you know because i'm a lover of people so i love seeing what other people are, have going on too so I'm pretty good at following people back and seeing what, what they're involved with because, again, life is about learning. It's not about just trying to be on the top because it's lonely at the top if you don't allow anybody else there with you. So um, that's the kind of culture that I promote as well. So those are probably the top things that I have going on right now. Absolutely. So you're a speaker, you're a coach, and, and that coaching is through Best You. Mm -hmm. And then you are also an author. So mm -hmm. you said you've put out two books recently. Do you have any other books? Um, those are the first two right now. Um, I have a book coming out this spring called The It Factor, which I'm really excited about because um, I've had so much interest. Um, you know, having done things like going through Miss America and being Miss Nebraska and and auditioning for things like The Voice and all these other things in my life. Um, again, nobody's perfect, and I don't know everything, but I do have a lot of experience in that area of. If you actually do want to walk in a room and be pretty darn sure you're going to get that interview or pretty darn sure that everyone's eyes are going to be on you or just to how to have an authentic presence. And the key word is authentic because I think that, you know, when you look at movies and you see somebody, you're like, they're the most amazing actor I've ever seen in my life. Um, and then you go watch them in an interview. Uh, normally, they're pretty just this is who I am, like, you know, whatever, totally congruent people who are just like I you can tell that they're not in love with themselves, but they love themselves. And they're just like, yeah, like I, I know that I'm talented, but I don't have to flaunt it and I don't have to have my chin in the air and whatever. So there are, there are strategic and um, what's the word? Um, quantifiable steps and ways that you can grow yourself in those areas. And I think that's really interesting. So that's something that you guys can look forward to. I look forward to it being done. There's so much research to be done because I, I don't put anything out unless I'm like, this is the best, you know what I mean? So, um, which again, it's never perfect, but I'm excited about that because that's going to help a lot of people, I think, get themselves to the next level in their careers and for anything that they want to accomplish. So that's coming up too. Absolutely. So, you know, I definitely encourage everybody to check, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, check out all of your work. Um, and I'll actually put links to everything in the description below. So make sure you go check out 
all Megan stuff. You go connect with Megan and all that good stuff. So, you know, we talked a little bit about your past. Uh, we got some great insight on, on different mindset and, and competition and, and all these different things. We talked a little bit about what you're doing now. But I want to think, I want to think long term, okay? What is your biggest goal in life? Like, like your, 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 uh, as, as, um, Jim Collins says your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal. Hmm. That's good. I haven't heard that before. Oh gosh. Um, well, I have like, you know, my top five, which are all like just at the outreach of like impossible, but possible in my brain. Um, but to be completely honest, I do, um, I, I want to lead worship and sing in front of a million people in my life. There are, um, for lack of a better term, crusades. There are services going on in Africa right now that are people are walking hundreds of miles to to join just to sing and to be together in community, which shows how powerful community is. And um, there are people who are getting to speak and sing at those things. And so definitely to be a speaker um, or singer or both at one of those things is, is huge for me, um, just because one of my greatest values is impact. And I I try to see people as God sees them, not for where they are right now. And, um, I think that's huge too. And it helps us to not get frustrated with people, even, you know, even if they do things to us or whatever. Um, another thing is I want to be the head speaker at, um, one of the, the biggest Amway conferences. I have no association with Amway, but it's kind of like my target market of like young millennial Christians who are really working to develop themselves. And I have a lot of great friends who are part of that, um, MLM and everything. And so that's just a funny goal that I set a couple of years ago and, um, have just gotten connected with more and more of people who are in that particular MLM. And, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not associated with it in any way, but I just think that that's like literally like the most target of my market ever. Um, and then another thing is I, uh, I will win a dove award one day too, which is like the Christian grant, uh, the Christian version of the, you know, the biggest music awards. And, um, I have a couple of friends who have won some dove awards and having gone to my school that I did, um, I have several friends who have already gotten signed to record labels and stuff like that. And you guys, one word of advice, the reason why we need to be the best versions of ourselves too, is that you never know when a connection is going to prove fruitful. And we don't ever make those connections just for what they can give us. Remember, we're always in situations for what we can give people. Because at the end of the day, that's what people are going to remember. That's why we do podcasts like this. It's for the people who watch it. It's to provide value. It's not about us. Great. I have a book. I have whatever. Everybody has a book. Everybody has what millions of people can sing in this world. But what people remember is the heart behind what you do and why you do what you do. Um, People remember the value that you gave them and the presence and the charisma, like the presence that you left them with. And so I really want to encourage you guys in that today. Um, That's something that I try to keep at the forefront of my eyes. But like I said, several of my friends um, have been blessed with opportunities like that already. And um, in a couple weeks, uh, I'm going back to Nashville to to visit them and do some co-writes and stuff like that. So don't, don't give up on even the dreams that are in the back of your head. Like I promise you that if you, if you really focus hard and fast on your one or two or three things for a year, don't forget, you know, numbers four and five back there too. Like who says, who says that you can't be the first person to do A, B, C, D and E, you know, again, obviously I talked about if you try to move forward in 20 things, it can be really hard to, um, you know, get there quicker, but guess what? at one point in time, somebody has got to be the first person to do it, you know? So who was it? Um, Thomas Edison, you know, it took him 3000 tries to make the light bulb and, but he did. And he found 3000 ways not to do it. And nobody had ever done that before, but then that was him. And everybody said it was impossible. Oh, we'll just use candles. It's fine. Whatever. Right. That's what technology is doing. That's what Instagram did. That's what Facebook did. Like it was impossible until they did it until they made it possible. So why can't that be you? Why can't that be me? Why can't that be all of us? Right. But that's why we have to be at the top of our game as well, because we're supposed to be a blessing and an influence to this world. And it's for what we can give the entire world through who we are and what we're supposed to be in the unique, beautiful gifts that are on the inside of us. So just remember that it's always what we can give. Like, yeah, we have great things and you do have to show about yourself a little bit to promote yourself, whatever, like let people know what you're doing, but always remember that at the end of the day, it's about what you can give and the presence that you'll leave with people of that presence of authenticity and, and, um, you know, like authentic confidence, I think. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I just have a few more questions for you. Um, you know, I really do appreciate your time. I can only imagine how busy you must be. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's been great having you on the show. Um, but what would you say to people who, you know, they're, they're not quite there yet. You know, they, maybe they want to be entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs and they're, they're so close to just taking the jump. What advice would you give them to just say, you know, so, so that they can say to themselves, you know what, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, one thing that I would caution people is, um, I think a lot of entrepreneurs could be, well, actually, I don't know if I have the right to speak about everybody, but I would caution people as to thinking that I have to quit my job, I can't go to school, I have to do all these things, now I'm an entrepreneur. Because in the beginning of being an entrepreneur, nine times out of ten, unless you have access to a bunch of capital, which if you do, great, way to go. A lot of times it is, you're going to have to work two or three part-time jobs, and you're going to have to go to school and waitress on the weekends and be an Uber driver and also run your business. And there is that time of where you do have to kind of present yourself as 2% farther than actually you are. You know what I mean? And then the second thing that I would say is don't get overwhelmed. Like, uh, just like your friend said, I think that was beautiful. Like I always tell people it's little victories. And so one plus one plus one eventually equals a hundred. And if a hundred is your goal, then you'll eventually get there by putting one foot in front of the other. Um, but just encouraging people, what could you do to even get 1% closer to being, being an entrepreneur, whatever that looks like for you, because being an entrepreneur looks differently to different people. And so don't, don't just observe Gary Vaynerchuk. Don't just look at Tony Robbins and say, oh, well, I could never. Because guess what? They had to start from a place where they felt like they could never, where they felt like they were literally at ground zero. We all start that way. So surround yourself with great people. Surround yourself with people that you can ask questions to. Um, I answer every single email in my direct messaging and, and all my emails, stuff like that. So if you feel like you connected with me at all or that I could give any value to you, I, I answer everybody. And that's really important because I was there once where I was just so overwhelmed and didn't know who I was or what my message was and what I wanted to do. So ask questions. Don't be afraid to surround yourself with good people. Um, don't expect that you're supposed to do this alone. And then just think about what could you do to get 1% closer, whether that's filing you know, with your state to make yourself an official business, whether that's coming up with a name, whether that is identifying who your target market is going to be, whether that is cleaning up your Instagram and your Facebook so that you look more professional. Like it doesn't have to be immediately, I'm gonna, here's how I'm going to make $100,000. It could be literally that first step. Because like I said, that the way that that makes us feel on the inside of just, oh, those tiny victories will continue to propel us towards actually eventually being an entrepreneur full time in a successful manner. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So I have two more questions for you. Um, and again, you know, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Um, yeah. The first question is, what do you want to leave behind as your legacy? Hmm. That is, uh, I know I've said it like three times now, but I, I really appreciate that question. Um, because, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're, we're very blessed to be able to have no cap as far as how successful we can be. Um, but at the same time, people are going to, aren't going to remember you for your fancy clothes and your cool shoes. I mean, maybe if like you're somebody who had a shoe company, but, um, for me, I, you know, I work very hard to work on myself all the time so that I, you know, I'm, I'm a coach, but at the same time, I want people to feel like she was always authentic and she was always there for the right reason. She was always there because she genuinely loved people and saw people for who they were and helped to draw out the absolute best version of that person. And, um, you know, that's what I want to be known for that somebody who, when you're around them, you, you become a better person. You're, you're forced to answer hard questions. You're forced to think deeply about yourself and not in a way where it's like, you can't have fun and you know, be a normal person, whatever, like 80% of my life I'm laughing or making a weird witty joke. But at the same time, like, just somebody who was known for, if you're, if you're around Megan, you're going to be asked if you could get paid to do anything, what would you do and why? You know what I mean? Like who's not afraid to have the, have those questions with people who is willing to talk to somebody who's this old guy on a bike that clearly is uncomfortable and doesn't want to be at the gym and telling him about dragons that you can catch on a stupid little bike. Like, you know what I mean? Some like, because we can all breathe life into a situation and that's what a coach should be or else you're in the wrong profession. If it's in it for you, 
then why are you doing it? Like if it's not actually for the, again, like I said, the ripple effect. So I want to be known for somebody who stayed genuine. And I had a lot of opportunities as Miss Nebraska to make it all about me and, um, to say, yeah, look how good I am. You know, boys who would never talk to me in high school and now I'm Miss Nebraska. Like, no, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, life is so much more and and it's not going to be fulfilling if it's, like I said, just about you getting to the top or just about you making a million dollars or do you, because once you get there, then it's like, then what, you know, I think it's that authenticity that will scream and, and shout from the mountaintops forever. And, and that's what I want to be known as. Absolutely. And and I think it's really noble purpose. And I have absolutely no doubt that, that you're going to, you're going to reach that. So, you know, I have one more question for you. Um, is there anything about yourself that you think is an important part of who you are that I did not ask you about today? In other words, what did I miss? Hmm, what an interesting question. Oh gosh, it's not often that I like don't have like, an answer. Um, a part of me, hmm. Hmm, I mean, I feel like professionally y'all know me pretty well now like I said uh I guess it's I can't talk enough about our association because I am so thankful for the family that I was raised in um in a lot of ways we're different but like that's huge in the incorporation of what's made me me today and um that's very important to know that too just because for people who were not raised with that kind of a blessing, um, you know, for, which is just sometimes the cards that's handed to us, um, know that there are people like me, you know, like a bunch of different people who are desiring that community out there and to be that community for you. And, you know, I've been in that place where, yes, I had a great family, um, back at home, but I still was 12 hours away in the middle of a college campus, restarting everything. Um, and, and really, you know, not to just make this sound like this is a perfectly crafted answer. Like, but like, that's why I started best you. That's why we have this group that we're a part of, like, because people are out there and who understand how important community is and they really want to be that for you. Like, so just don't be afraid. I think specifically guys sometimes are afraid to ask for help and want to be that macho man that figures it out. And, um, because guys compartmentalize things, they think, okay, I'm going to think this is the way that I do it. And if version A doesn't work, I'm going to try version A and I'm just going to try to make this work more and harder, you know, as opposed to asking for help where a girl is thinking, or, you know, not just a girl, but somebody else is thinking of version B, C, D, E, F, D, all these things that could really help you, or you might need somebody else's strengths or gifts or opinion or whatever. I mean, um, I'm part of several groups on Facebook where, frankly, I'm just not the expert and that is okay. You know, we're not supposed to be the expert about everything, but if I wouldn't have asked questions, you guys, I would not be where I am today because I would be trying to do it all myself and that is exhausting and I don't have time for that and I don't want to do that. So whether it's investing for knowledge, what investing in knowledge that you need, like let somebody else be the expert and then be a student, you know, and then be the expert in the areas that you desire to be the expert in. Um, but form that community. And like I said, give where it's your turn to give and then ask when it's your turn to ask. And there are awesome people in this world that are ready to help you and that, you know, are looking for a place to give their gifts so that they can help you. And then in turn, you can give to them. And and that's a really beautiful place to be. I mean, to be honest, I think that everybody could agree, like that's kind of how the e-commerce world works. Like I think there's a misconception, um, or even in business, even like in regular business, like brick and mortar business, like, yeah, there's going to be a few jerks everywhere who get to the top. But to be honest, like the people who are really, really successful are collaborative, great people to be around. Like they're good hangs, to be honest. And so again, talking about all these things together to kind of put a common thread between all these, like that's why mindset, that's why foundation, that's why community, that's why all these things that we've talked about really funnel into every part of your life. And I really encourage you that Whoever you end, whoever you end up learning from, whoever you end up seeking out for these things, like take some time for yourself to really try to develop those areas of your life because I promise you that they will overflow into everything else that you may think is your problem. Um, but I challenge you that it may be something unexpected that's actually internal, that a simple quick fix or you know even a month of 
working on something could really change your life and unblock you from that place of frustration that's been keeping you there for, for quite some time. So um, all of that to say that my family has been that for me. And, um, you know, like just my three closest best friends, even just the three people that I know that I can tell my dreams to, because P.S., please don't tell your dreams to everybody. Do not tell your dreams to everybody. They will tell you that you can't. They will tell you that you're never going to get there and it will discourage you. So just mm, not for everybody. Tell the most successful person you know so that they can encourage you. Um, but my family has always been somebody who encouraged me in my dreams, even when I stretched the limit of a lot of things. And that's gotten me to where I am today and building my belief system of myself. So um, I believe in you, even though I don't know you, because um, you know God's no respecter of persons and he's put all that potential inside of us. But it's what we do with that because potential lies dormant until we actually activate it. Um, and you guys have the power to do that. So I encourage you to to do that. If there's one thing that you learned from me today is just go and do it because you can and you will. That's great. That's fantastic. And so, you know, if, if anybody else wants to, or anybody that's listening wants to reach out to you or get in contact with you, um, maybe you, uh, you talked about it a little bit, but just once again, how could they reach out to you? Yeah. Um, social media is honestly the easiest way. Um, cause that's how I do a lot of my business. So through the best you group, um, facebook.com slash groups slash best you with a U um, group or on all my social media on Facebook, it's backslash Megan Swanson official. Megan doesn't have an H, um, or Instagram is at Megan underscore Swanson. I think if you type in my name, I think I'm the first one. Um, so it should be pretty easy for that to come up. And, um, yeah, those are the easiest ways I'm on social media all the time. Like I said, I, I respond to every message. I really love you guys and, and want to see you successful because that makes me happy. So yeah, please reach out. Don't be afraid. We're all just people. So absolutely. So, you know, I, I very much encourage everybody to reach out to Megan. Um, she's a fantastic coach. You know, I'm sure you, you can tell just from listening to the things that she said today that she has some things to teach you. Um, she can help you build up that foundation, find all those cracks, fix up everything that you need to fix up, um, and uh, you know she, she's a great person to talk to. So I encourage everybody to reach out. All of those links are going to be down in the description below. So go click them, and you know connect with Megan. So again, Megan, thank you so much for jumping on this interview today, and to everybody else listening, thank you. You are the reason that we do this. You, the community, the people are why we get up and do this every single day while we're out here hustling, while we're out here grinding to provide value to you. So thank you. I love you. I want to see you again. I want to see you back. Leave comments. Do whatever you need to do. Get in touch with us. But thank you. Okay. So this has been another Project Egg interview. Today we've been talking to Megan Swanson from Omaha, Nebraska. Megan, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.